Hello everyone and welcome back! In the last lesson we saw that whenever we dispatch an action to the store we also have to inform the store what to do with a given action. For that we need to provide the store a reducer function and that's what this reducers property here is for. So here is what we're going to do. We are going to implement the reducer function that is going to take the user profile and is going to save it in the application state. The user profile will be there in memory, ready to be used for next time. For that, the first thing that we're going to do is to define here the content of our application state. This is the global state that is kept on the store in memory. We're going to define here a first property, which is going to contain everything that is related to the authentication module that we are using here that contains the login screen. So any state that is generated or maintained by the login screens is kept here under this off property. We are going to say that this off property in the application state is of type off state. So this is a new type that we have not yet defined. Let's go ahead and define it. We are going to define it here in line so that it's easier to understand what's going on. We are going to define here a type called off state. We are going to say that this type here has a couple of properties. One of those properties is a flag, a Boolean flag that specifies if the user is currently logged in or not. This is going to be useful, for example, for blocking access to the user to certain screens until the user has been authenticated. More on this later, right now we are going to define the second property of our authentication state which is going to be the user profile. So let's go ahead and add here an user property of type user. So as you can see, this is how our application state is going to be structured. We have here under off everything that corresponds to the authentication module. But what about the courses module? Well, for that, we are going to have here other properties that will contain other type of state. For example, we're going to have here a property called courses, which is going to contain the courses state. We're going to also have here another entry called lessons. This is going to be of type lesson state, etc. So for each of these properties of the application state, we need to specify here a reducer function that is going to know how to take an action and produce a new instance of each of these state types. Right now, our store only has the authentication state, so we only need to specify here one function, which is going to be the authentication reducer. In order to make sure we understand what is going on, let's immediately write the signature of this function and we're going to also remind ourselves what is the purpose of this function. The reducer functions are going to be called after dispatching an action and the goal here is to take the current state, so that's the first argument of a reducer function, the current state, take the action that was just dispatched, so that's the second argument, and return as the output of this function the new state. We are going to add here that the return type of this authentication reducer needs to be of type authentication state. So the goal essentially is to compute the new state that we are keeping inside the store as a response to a given action. That's the goal of the reducer function that should be a pure function with no side effects. This function is called a reducer because its signature is identical to the reduce functional programming operation. Let's then go ahead and implement our authentication reducer. The first thing that we want to do is to identify exactly what action are we processing, because this might be a login action or a logout action in the future. This could be any of the actions linked to the authentication module. So let's go ahead and differentiate each case by doing a switch in the type property of the action. This is going to be a string that is going to uniquely identify what type of action we are handling. We're going to add here one case clause per action type, starting with the login action. So if it's a login action, then what should be the output of this function? One thing is for sure, we need to output a new object, which is going to be the new authentication state that we are going to keep in memory in the store. So let's go ahead and create here 
a new object. So it's very important not to mutate the existing object, but to create a new one. And here we are going to fill in the multiple properties of the new authentication state. Let's start with the logged in property. Because the user has already successfully logged in at this point, we are going to be able to set this to true. And we also have here the value of the user property. This is available here at the level of the action. If we switch here to the definition of the login action, we can see that we have here a payload property with the user data. So we can go ahead and retrieve here the user data from the payload. And with this, our reducer function would already work, but we are going to make it a little bit more robust. We are going to add here a default clause, which is for the case where the action is currently unknown by the reducer. So it's neither the login action or any other known action. In that case, we should simply return the existing state without any modification. And with this in place, our reducer function is ready to be used. Let's go ahead and try the current version of our application and see how everything is working. We're going to go ahead and reload here the application. And once the application is reloaded, we're going to have a look at the state. It's still an empty object. Now let's go here to our login screen and perform a login and see what happens. So again, we have here a login action, but now if we click on it and we have a look at the current application state, so this is the state object tree that is being stored in the centralized store, we can see that now we have something filled in in the store. So we have here an off property and we have here the authentication state filled in. We have the user logged in as expected and we have here the user profile saved in the store. So this is what we were looking for. As a result of the login action, we have modified the store state. There was a lot going on in this lesson, so let's go ahead and review everything that we did step by step. Here at the level of our login component, upon successful login, we have dispatched here the login action to the store using the dispatch method. The store then took this action and it tried to calculate a new store state. The way that the store does this is the store is going to take the current version of the application state. Then the store is going to run all the reducers that we have defined here in the reducers function. And for each of the properties of the state, it's going to run its own reducer. So in the case of the off property, we are going to be running the authentication reducer. This reducer then entered here this condition because we were processing the login action and we have produced here a new authentication state, which then got applied here to the store in the off property. So this object here is the output of the reducer function. And with this, we have completed the implementation of our very first reducer. Let's summarize. The goal of the reducer function is to calculate the new store state in response to a given action. Now, unlike the case of the original application, if we navigate around the application, let's say that we go here to the courses screen and we click view course, we hit the paginator, we go back here to the courses screen, during all this time, during all these navigations, the information about the user is still here in the store ready to be used. Just because we have navigated away from the login screen does not mean that this state was lost. Let's now continue to dive deeper into the store pattern. Let's see how can we give the store an initial value different than the empty object. 